Welcome ladies and gentlemen, today we're playing another indie horror game. This is Killer Frequency and a game that I have been looking forward to for some time. I did a review uh, quite a while back on the channel for the Mel Gibson film On The Line, which had a great concept. A shock jock DJ um, is trying to hunt down a killer in the studio. It was very poorly executed because there's a twist, A, that you can see coming a mile away, and B, was just really poorly slap in the face to its audience. I'm hoping that this uh, will set the tone, will set the stage for the next iteration for me trying to play a DJ. The year is 1987, and as the clock strikes midnight in small town Gallows Creek, former big city radio DJ Forrest Nash is live on air in what will turn out to be the graveyard shift of a lifetime. We'll be solving puzzles to save callers from being hunted by a mysterious killer. Every call could be life or death, so let's get into this. Um, this is a very dialogue heavy driven game, so I'm going to be quiet when the people are talking. Um, but yeah, here we go. Uh, movement. Oh, I see. It's got a bit of a penumbra style things to opening stuff. Uh, oh, okay. So, sorry. Picking up objects. Yes. Beer bottle. Can I drink it? Nope. Uh, hold two objects, swap objects between hands. Oh, I see. Drop objects is F, which is a strange. I thought it would be G, but throw objects, R, oh, okay. Um, hold to place the object. Okay, so... I'm not changing it in my hands, though, so... We'll throw that beer bottle down. We don't need that. Where are we here? What is going on? Ugh, nice cockroaches. I'm gonna break it here. Oh, that's just opening the thing. Well, there's no fuses in there, so we're all good. Can't seem to run. Hello? Inspecting objects. Press E to inspect the object. So... Uh-huh. Oh, I see. So some objects may have things in them, right? We don't need that though, right? How do I get in? Perhaps that was not the place to go to. Crouch. Yeah. Good. Still can't get in though. I'm liking the aesthetic already. Yeah, I'm gonna close that behind me, yes. Nothing to see here. something, Peggy? Huh? Hear what? I thought I heard someone yelling, or I don't know, how? Forrest, is this a joke? No, I, <laughs> I almost swore I heard something. Oh, and here I was thinking you'd finally started to ease up. You probably just heard some cats outside. Cats? You know, four legs, whiskers, tails, not dogs. <laughs> I know what a cat is, but I mean, does Gallows Creek have a stray cat problem or something? Not since the rats moved in. Anyway, you ready to do the pre-flight checks? Seriously? Do we have to do these checks every time? And do you have to call them that? Reggie pays us to check the equipment before each show. And he pays us to call it a pre-flight check. But if you're sure you don't want to... 
Okay. Um, do I need a tutorial? Yes. Uh, nah, skip Let's it. Just get we'll started. pick it up. We'll pick I know it up. How this goes. Okay, big shot. Any technical failures tonight are on your head. Now, let's get the show started. After your introduction, our first segment is Guess That Scream. I thought that was a joke. Nope, and don't blame me for this one. It's Reggie all the way, and he demands we do it tonight. Okay, okay you're live in three, two... 189.16. Good evening, Gallows Creek. This is your host, Forrest Nash, and you're listening to 189.16, The Scream. Before we start taking your calls tonight on Gallows Creek's only late night phone in talk show, I need to let you know about a special competition we have for you this evening. Guess that scream. This is actually one of the station manager's better ideas. Here's how it works. I'm gonna play you a scream, then you call and Guess that scream. We need you to guess why they're screaming. Did they stub their toe, saw off a finger, or discover the corpse of a loved one? That's good. Now, Forrest, hit them with the tape. We'll play that scream in just a second. Listen close, and then call in to guess that scream. Peggy, what do you mean, play the tape? I used to have a tape guy do that for me. You're not in Chicago anymore, Forrest. Here in Gallows Creek, you get to be your own tape guy. Come on, I gave it to you yesterday. Forrest, you do have the tape right. You knew we were doing this tonight. Peggy, let's be real. Guess that scream is a terrible idea. No, I, I don't have the tape. It may be a stupid idea, but that doesn't mean it can't be fun. We're going to need a to scream tonight, Forrest. And you're the one at the mic, so... Hmm. Well, there's some tapes there, but I don't have the tape, so... Really, Peggy? You want, you want me to scream? You know this show depends on my golden voice, right? Come on, Forrest, just do it! That's enough dead air already. Just think of a scream and let it rip! Oh, God. Sorry about that. <laughs> I'm back. I had to step away there for a second. Listen close, and then call in to guess that scream. <sighs> well, folks, there you have it. Call in with your guesses, and if you get it right, you could win two tickets to the amazing Maze Maze and one free fried dough. Fried dough? Just call in at 555-239-KFAM with your guest. Now, here's some music while you get dialing. Time to go on the journey that is Blast Processor with their hit song, 1980X. Oh, God, Forrest! Thanks. I can't wait to hear what people think that was. <laughs> How the hell did I get into this mess? Lighten up, Forrest. That's gonna be the highlight of my week. Okay. Get oh, into basics. Forrest, there's a call coming in. Alrighty. Okay, Forrest, shut the music off. Welcome to 189.16. The Scream. Caller, you're talking to Forrest Nash. What's going on with you tonight? Forrest, thank God I made it through. My name is Leslie Harper. I'm the 911 operator and police dispatcher for Gallows Creek. Welcome to the show, Leslie. Are you calling in to guess that scream? As a 911 operator, I bet you may have an educated guess. What? No! Look! I found a body, and I need your help. <laughs> 911 is calling me to report a body. Interesting setup. All right, I'll bite. What's the punchline, then? Forrest, I recognize her voice. I'm pretty sure that actually is our 911 operator. I think this is real. Peggy, I'm not going to be happy if this is a prank. 
I don't do prank segments on my shows. It's in my contract. Forrest, I really don't think this is a prank. Leslie, if you're telling the truth, you should report this to the sheriff. What was his name? Sheriff Andrews or whatever? I'm at the sheriff's office right now. Wait, what? Sheriff Matthews is dead. What? Sheriff Matthews is dead? I couldn't get any response from the department. That's never happened before, so I came to the station and... I found him. Oh, God. Poor Sheriff Matthews. Do you know what happened to him? Someone got him. Someone got up very close and... I really don't want to say what they did to him. Did he fight back? I don't know. I think he tried. He's surrounded by bullet casings. I think he tried to shoot at whoever it was, but... Well, is, is anyone else at the station? Anyone who can help you? Or, or who might be responsible? No. I checked everywhere. Deputy Martinez is here, but she's knocked out, tied up, and locked in a holding cell. I called you right after I found her. God. Wait. Please don't tell me that this hick town only has two cops. Don't be ridiculous. We have three. But Officer Gunderson is on leave in Cancun. Leslie, do you have any idea who could have done this? Not a clue. I didn't see anything on my way over. Leslie, you need to call over to Henderson or Quiet Ridge. They need to send someone over from their department. I tried, but I can't call anything but local numbers. Something's wrong. I'll have to go there myself, let them know what's going on, and bring help back with me. But if you leave while there's a murderer on the loose, who's gonna man the emergency line? That's why I called. Forrest, I've routed all 911 calls to come in to you. No, I'm sorry, but this is a terrible idea. What on earth made you think to do that? You're the only person with experience manning a phone line around here. You're the only person equipped for the job. Besides, there are lots of transferable skills between the two. It's like an interview. You ask questions to get information you can use. Keep people talking, you know? Guide the conversation and know when to jump in. You do know that I'm so good at interviews, they sent me from Chicago to Gallows Creek, right? So I've heard. But that doesn't matter. And besides, there are two of you. You can talk to each other, discuss ideas, work together. Hell, let's have some on-the-job training right now. Oh no. I have an emergency. I need to get an unconscious Deputy Martinez out of that holding cell. It looks like whoever attacked her threw the keys into the cell after they locked the door. Is there any way you can reach the keys? No. There aren't any bars to the cell, and the door itself only has a food tray slot. And that's too narrow for me to reach through. There's gotta be another way in. There's gotta be another set of keys somewhere in that office. Those can't be the only one. Of course. Yes, there must be another set. Where might another set be? Maybe Sheriff Matthews had a set of keys on him when he... You know. I couldn't see any at a glance, but I didn't really look up close. One second. Oh, I think I might be sick. Sorry, Sheriff. I'm just gonna turn you over and... Oh. Please don't stare at me. I... Oh, wait. That might be them. Looks like Sheriff Matthews might have saved his deputy. Do the keys work? They do! Give me a minute to untie Deputy Martinez. I'll be right back. So far, so good, I suppose. How are you feeling, Forrest? I... I swear to God, Peggy, if this is some sort of joke, I'm leaving this town. I've never heard of anything like... Like this, happening in broadcast. I've never heard about anything like this either. But we're here now, Forrest, and we've just got to see what happens next. Come on, Martinez. There we go. I'm just gonna sit you in your office 
chair. We'll head to my car in a minute. I'm back. Deputy Martinez is still out cold. I'm taking her in the car with me to get help in Henderson. If the killer came back now, Martinez would be a sitting duck. That's a good idea. We don't want to take any risks right now. Thank you, Forrest. You and Peggy just worked together like you did earlier. You can do this. Now I'll be back as soon as I can. What? My car! My car is on fire! What do you mean it's on fire? How the hell? Did it just go up in smoke? What happened? Wait. What? No. No way. This can't... Well, Forrest, we have big trouble. What's happening? Uh, what's that noise? It sounds like... whistling? Whistling? It can't be. Oh my god. I can see him, but... he's dead, right? Right? But that mask... how the hell is he? Who, Leslie? Who? The Whistling Man! The Whistling Man? Who's the Whistling Man? He was a serial killer back in the 50s. Wore that mask. But he's dead! He's... what the hell? Oh, God. Do you think... Do you think he attacked Sheriff Matthews and Deputy Martinez? He's coming this way! Leslie, stay inside and lock the doors. Right. Shit, we need a new plan. My car is torched. We need to think! There should be police cruisers at the sheriff's office, right? Like, you should take one of those. I... Yeah. Yeah, that could work. Let me check if Martinez has any... Uh, just reach into your pocket there, deputy, and... Yes, got him. Keys for squad car three. I saw that parked out front when I got here. Nice one, Forrest. Good thinking. But wait. How am I supposed to get us to the car? The whistling man is right there. Well, they did say Sheriff Matthew's gun had been... There was, uh, he'd been shooting, right? So he's... yeah. Deputy Martinez okay. surely carries a gun, right? C could you use that? Deputy Martinez's gun is missing. Oh, God. I guess the whistling man must have done something with it. The sheriff must have a gun, right? Can, can you see it? There was a gun next to him. Let me grab it. I... Oh, shit. It's empty. That's what I thought. He must have emptied it trying to defend himself. They said it was a lot of bullets. Um... There must be a weapon lockup in the station, right? Could you grab something from there? I saw it earlier, but as you might have guessed, it was locked. But maybe one of these keys I got earlier will help. Let me see. No. No. No! Uh, shit! None of the keys work! Are, are there any other weapons lying around that you could use? I didn't see anything earlier. Um... Uh, let me check Deputy Martinez's belt. All right. It looks like the whistling man left her with a baton, pepper spray, and taser. I can only hold one if I'm carrying Deputy Martinez. Which should I take? Oh, this sounds like it's going to be, um... Well, if she takes the pepper spray, I'm thinking... I'm glad there's not a timer countdown on these, because I need to I need to think about this. If she takes the pepper spray and uses it with the killer, she could spray herself, right? The taser is a one-shot type of job, so if she misses, she's done for. And the baton... Uh, I'm torn between the taser and the baton. Because she can try and fend herself off with the baton, right? But I think if the taser... If she gets the killer with a taser, I don't know. Taser. I mean, it's got to be the taser, right? Got it. I'm just going to grab Deputy Martinez and then... Wait. Do you hear that? No. I, I can't hear anything. Exactly. It's gone quiet. No more knocking. Be careful. I don't like it. Me neither. But it's an opening, and I've got to take it. 
Okay. Deputy Martinez, if you can hear me, it's time to move. Just lean on me. <gasps> yep. There you go. Are you sure about this, Leslie? No time like the present, right? So, here we go. Again, you're hooked into dispatch now, so I should be able to radio you when I reach the car. If I reach it. <sighs> Speak to you soon. Well, good luck. This is the part where the killer comes out of nowhere, isn't it? <sighs> you know, I've got to say, this really wasn't what I expected when I came into work today. Well, they always say you have to be ready for everything in live radio. Oh, I think we've got Leslie back on the line. I'm putting the call through. Hello? Forrest? Peggy? This is Leslie. Are you there? Over. We're here. Leslie. So I, I guess you made it to the car then. Over. Sorry about the CB chat. Old habit. But yes, we made it to the car. Deputy Martinez is in the passenger seat, still out cold. I don't see the whistling man anywhere, and I don't plan to wait for him. So I'm going to get us moving. Jesus! God damn it! Get, get back! Get away from her! Leslie, what's happening? The whistling! No! Get off her, you son of a bitch! Leslie, drive! Don't worry, Deputy Martinez. We're out of here. Leslie, are you two okay? Did you get away? Or... Forrest, that taser? Definitely the right call. Oh my god, I can't believe we escaped. Well done, Leslie. You saved a life. Just another day for you. Oh my god, yeah. But let me tell you. I prefer doing it from your side of the phone. Leslie, how long do you think it's going to take to get help? Gallows Creek has a nowheresville, but it's pretty damn close. It's going to take a while, maybe two, three hours each way. Slightly less if I put my foot down. You keep that pedal to the floor then. We'll see when you're back. You don't have to tell me twice. Anyway, once I'm in... I think Deputy Martinez is starting to stir. Forrest, Peggy, I've got to go. I'll be out of range soon, but I'll radio back as soon as I can once I got the cavalry. Take care, Leslie. Be safe out there. Good luck, Leslie. Feel better soon, Deputy Martinez. <laughs> Folks, you heard it here. We've got a killer on the streets of Gallows Creek tonight. Please make sure to stay safe. And Leslie, we're counting on you. We're gonna get back to the show, meanwhile. If you have anything on your mind, or have any information about this Whistling Man character, then give us a call. We'll talk here on 189.16, The Scream. For now, here's another hit record for you all to enjoy. Hope you enjoy this one as much as I do. This is not what I signed up for, Peggy. This is actually insane. Did she really say it's gonna take her four hours? This guy's gonna kill half the town in four hours. Forrest, that's not helpful. I know, I know, I just... <sighs> Who is this Whistling Man character anyway? He was a serial killer back in the 50s. Edward Marshall Mooney. Went around in a freaky mask whistling and killed about a dozen folks in Gallows Creek. No reason for it. No motive. He just did. Okay. What happened to him? Well, police chased him up to Ellis Point one night. We call it whistling point now. And it was, well, it was on this night actually. The police cornered him jumped into the river. His body was never found. So is he alive? Dead? I mean, what's the story? Story is, he's biding his time, waiting to take revenge on the town. All right, that's the story. What's the truth? 
Other than we have a whistling killer on our hands tonight, I don't know. I guess we'll find out what we're dealing with, whether we like it or not. I guess so. <sighs> at least we got the word out, I guess. What kind of listening figures do we get at this time? On a Thursday after midnight? Could be around 35? 35? Isn't 3,500? Huh. I didn't realize Gallows Creek was that large. No, 35 people. At best. <laughs> Thirty-five, at best? Thirty-five, yeah. It's a school night. And what's the population of Gallows Creek? I don't know exactly. A little over a thousand? Oh. How many did you get before? You know... Before my career exploded and I ended up on a midnight hour talk show in the town of a thousand people? Yeah, before that. Around five for most shows on the low end? Big gas could pump that up to ten, fifteen, easy. 5,000 on the low end? We could only dream of that. Five million. Million? Yeah, sometimes that's just the way it goes. At least the whistling man hasn't killed me yet. I guess. Yeah, I guess we're gonna learn a lot about perspective tonight, huh? Oh, we have a call coming in. Take it when you're ready. Time to turn the music off. Hello, caller. You're live on 189.16, The Scream. Is everything, uh, all right? Okay, uh, who is this? Are you, uh, hello? Hello? Okay, what's your name and why are you calling in? Accept request. I've got a list of names I'd love to see in the obituaries. Oh, uh, maybe you must make a sacrifice to us. A sacrifice to us? I, I mean, me. We want cheese dusted pretzels. I mean, I want cheese dusted pretzels! Or I'll cut your face off! Goddamn kids. I'm cutting them off. Not yet. I want to deal with them. Okay, so, cheese-dusted pretzels and a mega-gulp behind the gas station. You got it, whistling man. Uh, a wise choice! See you soon, Boris Nash! Needless to say, I won't actually be going out to the gas station to buy anything for these kids. And none of you should be going out tonight either. We've got an actual killer out there. Anyway, this next one's dedicated to all of you staying inside with your doors and windows locked. You're gonna love this next track. Peggy, the hell was that? Kids pretending to be a killer who right now is stalking the town? It's a thing. A thing? Oh, kids around here. They pull pranks pretending to be him. By pretending to be this whistling man character? They think it's funny, but it's not. It's not funny at all. And there's no chance that our whistling man was just a prank. That Leslie... No, that... That's real. <sighs> Christ. Let's stay positive. 
We still have a show to do. We already have another caller on the line. All right. Let's do this. Hello, caller. You're live on the stream with me, Forrest Nash. What? I, I dialed 911. I need the sheriff right away. Okay, right. Well, I'm filling in for 911 tonight. What's your name and what's your trouble? Uh, my name is Sandra Sharp, and I need the cops now. I'm sorry, but the cops aren't coming. Leslie's on her way to Henderson for help. What? God. Listen, you've got to help me then. I drove to the edge of town for a jazz run, and now some psycho dressed like the Whistling Man is after me, knife in hand. Oh, God. It's actually happening. You went out for a jazz run? What, what is that? What is it? It's jazz running, baby. And it got my butt all the way back to my car before I got slashed. But I dropped my keys somewhere along the way. I never locked the door at least. I've got a place to hide, but I can't get moving. Is there anywhere else you can go? Do you have any friends nearby? Well, I'm not going back out there. I... Oh, shoot. Oh, he's back. Look, I don't know a thing about cars, but I gotta start this engine without the keys. And you're gonna have to help me. Wait, 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 I don't. Well, if it helps, I've got a toolkit buried beneath my spare sweatbands. I'll call you back when I find it. You're listening to 189.16, The Scream. Hosted by me, Forrest Nash, your friendly neighborhood radio host, mechanic, and savior. Sit tight while the record spins, folks. This one goes out to you, Sandra. Now it's time to go with The Flow. And this is their hit, Crying for Help. Doesn't the station have a show about cars? The Tamora Twins or something? Timberline Twins Talk Motors. Yeah. You know they're not even brothers. Really? They look the same, though. I know, but they're not even related. It's weird. I asked them about it once, and they got really sweaty and defensive. Anyway, go see what you can find. The offices are out the door and down the hall. Okay, so we're stepping away from the the DJ booth at the moment. And uh, yeah, a lot to kind of take in there. Um, not withstanding this actual poster of the town, which has a lot of things going on. And a lot of the street names, obviously Romero Street, George A. Romero, McCready Street from The Thing, Myers Lane, Michael Myers, a lot of uh, 80s horror references. Pill Street, maybe Jordan Pill, maybe. Um, yeah, I'm just going to check out the area here. I think we've had the... I love the little interactions with everything. Um, I'm really enjoying it. Frequency fast, ghost lights. All right, so we have to go down and find some kind of... Oh, this opens outwards, I see. Oh, well, that door's just like a... Can we uh, ask with Peggy? Fair enough. Um, some cheese? Not getting in there tonight. Okay. No, we have to go downstairs. Let's just check out the area while we can, though. Um, oh, okay. Sorry. Now, let's see what we've got here. Toilets. It's a horror game. We have to check out the toilets. And what is this? This looks useful. What is that? Oh! So I didn't have to go downstairs? Hang on. Oh. I do want to go downstairs, though. So can I put that in my other hand? There we go. Right. There was a beer down here as well. I might want to have that. The 
The Gallows Reporter. GC High wins the big game, 28-20. Okay. I think we found the actual magazine that we wanted. Doors, so few keys. Um, but we're still going to investigate the area because at this moment, there's a lot of dialogue going on. I feel like this is the only time when I can actually just process things. So we do have the car magazine here. Can we not call anyone? No. Okay. What do we got over here? Coffee machine. Scare the creepy hour. Craft and work. No. Oh, we have a little radio here. Can we? Oh, I see. That's just tuning into the radio station. Ah, we have cassette tape. Grilling spree. Oh, we'll take that. Oh, hang on. Hang on. Just going to put that back for a second. Let's just... No, it's all shorthand. We can't read shorthand. But what is this? We can all agree that the flavor profiles of uh, Chalapacabra are the best in town. For the hundredth time, it's an audio medium. People won't get its egg. An excellent. All right. I got the little uh, aliens ducking. Uh, what have we got here? Dear Bradley Carter, please enjoy a free sample of garlic bread. We've pinned our latest offers and deals on the outside of the box if you want to read them out on air. Grilling Spree's new offer is terrible, and we think you should read our advert instead. P.S. A connoisseur like you needs to try our three-hour slow-roasted pizza. Much love. Hey, I ate the garlic bread. Much like your show, it was mediocre. The deal is worth checking out, though. Okay. We're definitely coming back to that tape. Um, the tapes on the DJ booth seem to be like adverts, so... We're only going to be looking for things that... may be worthwhile. Oh. That's just a folder. Uh, but we do... Oh. We've got drawers as well, huh? This has to be important. Oh, hang on. Twins, I've borrowed your car theft magazine. Those... Huevos? Rancheros? Aren't sitting right. Gonna need something to read. Pray for me. Uh... Oh, okay. Right, so... I see. So this is their desk here. I've got some... Adult ticket to um, Roller Ricky's Roller Rink. Nice. And what is this? Oh no, shorthand again. Can I leave you? I'll put you on top there. No. Okay, I think we inadvertently got the thing that we needed. KFM. I am really digging this. I'm really digging the aesthetic. The information on. Please stop putting stickers on office furniture. You're lowering the resale value of everything. Reggie seems to be the guy in charge. Yeah, just everything about this is just like... And everything's really... Uh, you can interact with everything. Pretty much everything, at least. Uh, oh, yeah, the tape. We're going to bring that as with us as well. Where did that go? That was over here, wasn't it? Yeah. We'll bring the tape with us. We can only hold two things at once. That's fine. The doors don't really close in this. They're like swing doors. But, hey, it's okay. Um... Let's close that. Is it going to close on its own? I don't want the door open. I feel safe in my DJ booth. All right, let's put you in. We'll put you there. And then how do I, I see, right. And we can put you there. Oh, so right. Peggy wants to talk to me, but I need to have a look at this for just one second. Hot wire, your ride. Keyless entry technique. Step one, use a screwdriver. Right, if that fails, remove the steering column. Step three seems to where it seems to be getting a little bit tricky. Check the serial number, then strip and twist the following wires together. If there is a four before if there is a four before a three and a number seven a number, right, okay. This she's gonna I, I, I get what's going on here. Okay, let's put this down. Let's speak to Peggy and um, I'll be quiet once again while the dialogue is going on. And when we have these little interactions where I can like vent and debrief, I will. You find anything? Yeah, I found a magazine about hot wiring cars. Well, that sounds perfect. Okay, Forrest, shut the music off. No, I don't think I need to. This is we're not going to save everyone. <laughs> we're not going to save the <laughs> the city folk here. We're going to kill them. Oh, this isn't going to go good. Caller on line 1. Thanks, Peggy. 
We're back with 189.16, The Scream. How are you holding up, Sandra? The creep's looking through the parking lot trying to find me. But I've got my tools, and I'm ready to get this hunk of junk moving. How do we start this, baby? Put the screwdriver in the ignition and twist clockwise. Here goes, baby. Remove the steering column. Unscrew the steering column. All right. Just turn. Just turn. One, two, one, two. We need a serial number now. How long are these screws? Okay. Covers off. Okay. There's a bunch of wires down here all paired up and... Oh, God, my heart is pumping. Tell me exactly what you see. Okay, we can do this. There's a red wire, a blue wire, a yellow wire, a, a green wire, and a brown wire. What's the serial number on the steering column? The number is 576-894-320. Okay, we're not on a time limit here, so we can look at this. Um, Sandra says a serial number, right, so there is a four before three, yes, and number seven a number, yes, red and blue. Okay, but let's just have a quick look. If there is a six anywhere that doesn't start with a five, sorry, if there is a six anywhere that doesn't start with a five, right, so that's that out. If there is a, um, what's that? If there is a zero at the end and a three doesn't come before a six, there is a zero at the end, and three doesn't come before six. It doesn't, so it's the red and blue wires. Strip the blue and red wires and twist them together. Okay, here we go. Blue and red and twist and turn and... Oh! Oh! Oh, it will turn off! Oh! Whoa, 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 whoa. Radio. Oh, shit. Creeping wires going into the stereo. What do we do? If the radio turns on, it won't turn... Oh, uh, uh, um... Cut the left pink wire. Cut the left wire. Oh. Oh. That was high intensity. I... Oh, no. It's okay. He's walking toward the car. Oh, what do I do? Hang on. Um... Should the brown and green? Oh no, this wasn't in the manual. Am I being stupid here? I thought it was gonna be the purple wire. I thought we were going to the next step. Um, yeah. If there is a six anywhere that doesn't start with, is this? If there is a six anywhere that doesn't start with a five. Oh no, if there is a six anywhere that doesn't start with a five, it's not that one, so it's gotta be the red and yellow wires, right? <laughs> Oh no, if there is a zero at the end, there is a zero at the end. And a three doesn't come before a six. It, it doesn't. Oh, it doesn't. Oh, right. Strip and twist together the red and yellow wires. I think this is wrong. All right. We take the red and the yellow and we twist and we turn. It's the, the way it's been. Perfect. Oh. I also see pink and purple wire. What next? Right. Strip the purple wire and brush, brush. Strip the purple wire and brush against the twisted wires. Okay, okay. We strip and we brush and. <gasps> yeah, you got out, Sandra. Yes, it worked, baby. <laughs> if that was timed, I would have been dead. You just keep driving now, okay? And get home safe. Get home safe, Sandra. Will do, babies. We did it, Forrest! We sure did! Here comes another hit track that we're ja excited to share with you. And remember, if you're also having car troubles, then tune in to... Timberline Twins Talk Motors here on 189.16, Monday to Friday at 5. Take it away, Forrest.
Whew. Here comes one of my favorites. I still can't believe this is happening. <sighs> right? My Gallows Creek didn't already have enough to worry about. What do you mean? Gallows Creek is a miserable place to live. Really? Miserable? Peggy, be honest, it's a dump. There's nothing to do here. Hell, I'm almost ready to thank this whistling guy for at least making things interesting. Well, I like it here. People are polite and, uh... Stab happy? Don't be awful, Forrest. Come on, there must be something you like about this place. I guess some folks have been okay. You're not terrible. After a while. Not terrible after a while? High praise coming from Forrest Nash. Slick Forrest you know Nash. I mean, Peggy. I do. It's Forrest Nash for I think you're swell. Anyway, I hope the killer is done for the night. And that Leslie gets back soon. Me too. Can we at least call off that stupid guess the scream contest now? Yeah, that'd probably be a good idea. Twelve forty two. Caller on line one. Evening, caller. This is Forrest Nash, host of one eighty nine point sixteen, The Scream, and tonight's nine one one stand in. Hey, Forrest. My name is Brian. Uh, uh, Brian Ponty. Brian Ponty of Ponty's Pizza. Hello, Brian. What have you got to say? about what's happening. I'm so happy that that Deputy Martinez survived. I've seen her a lot over the years down here at Ponty's Pizza. Oh, you did a really great job. And uh, as a thanks for all you did there, I just wanted to tell you that I'm sending you some coupons for free pizza here at Ponty's Pizza. Wow, Brian. That's really good of you. You really don't have to, though. Oh, it's the least I can do. And if you like it, well, you're in luck. Because we're always running great deals that'll have you eating for pennies. Sounds great, bro. And let me tell you, the pizza we have is to die for. Oh, 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 oh no, 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 no. Poor choice of words tonight, I guess. Yeah, that didn't come out great. I'm sorry, Forrest. Well, I just hope I didn't put you or anyone else off coming on down to Pony's Pizza. We've got a great special this weekend. Our famous beer and pizza deal. Wait a minute. Come on down to Pony's Pizza this weekend. You've just got to pay for one slice to get yourself. God damn it. You're just calling in to advertise your shop. Peggy, hang up on him. Done. Oh, real quick, before I forget, it's probably time we played a paid ad. Now, a word from our sponsors. You know how to play an ad, right? Sure. Okay. Uh, what was the one that we got down from the green spree? Um, let's just check this out. Yeah, why not? Let's put the green spree on. Why not? Oh. Done. <laughs> Great party, man. <laughs> Thanks. Can I grab another beer? Hey, sure thing. Let me grab you one out of the fridge. Oh, no. We're out of beer. What am I going to do? The party is going to be over. <laughs> Fear not. The grilling spray will give you a free six-pack of beer if Gallus High wins this Tuesday. Say what? That's right. Order a meal deal from us and you'll get a free six-pack of beer if Gallus High wins. A free six-pack? Righteous! You heard me. Six beers if Gallus High wins. Sounds like you've already had enough beers. <laughs> I hope we <laughs> murder them. <laughs> me too, Billy. Me too. Come on down to Grilling Spray or call up 555-749-8335. We've got barbecue you'll die for. 
189.16. Yeah. <laughs> hey Forrest, do you know what the Grill Reaper's favorite grilling spree order is? Uh, I have a feeling you're gonna tell me. Spare ribs. Uh, just get me back on the air. And we're back. We got a caller. You know what to do. Welcome to The Scream with me, Forrest Nash. Yeah, Leslie. This is Maurice Russell from the Gallows Reporter. I'm at the office. This guy just broke in downstairs and... Wait. Forrest Nash? I want to speak to 911. Put Leslie on. What? God, another one? I am 911. At least for tonight, anyway. Damn it, son. I don't care who you are. Just put me on with Sheriff Matthews. Sheriff Matthews is dead. Dead? What happened? Did you witness the incident? Are you willing to do an interview for the reporter? I can cite you as an anonymous source, if that's a concern. We're live on the air. Anything we say can and will be broadcast. Live on... Damn it. All right. There's obviously a lot more going on than I know. Yeah, you, there's a lot happening tonight. You said someone broke in. That's nothing to get worked up about. Some idiot kid just broke in. Dressed as the whistling man. <laughs> Teens. They get worse every year. Uh, this punk wasn't even a disappointing twinkle in his daddy's eye when Edward Marshall Mooney stalked the town. But I was there. I covered it. You don't understand. That's not a prankster. That's the whistling man. Of course it's not. It's a stupid kid. Every year this happens. They think it's funny. Not a big deal, old man. But they didn't live through the terror 30 years ago. Anyway, I know for a fact. Edward Marshall Mooney is dead. I don't know who I'm looking at on the security monitor. But if he killed Sheriff Matthews... Where are you now? I'm in the boardroom. Upstairs. We got security cameras all around the building. You can watch them on any TV set here. And there's a set in the boardroom. Maurice, is there any way you can get out of there? Uh, I sure as shit hope so, kid. But I'm not sure how I'm going to do it. That crash you heard was him tipping over my filing cabinets. He's blocking the stairs. I'm guessing the stairs are the only way out? That's right. And it would take me a good few minutes to move those cabinets. We need to do something. But what? All we can do from here is... Forrest, I think I've got it. Why don't we call the killer? They'd have a bunch of phones set up across the office, right? In different rooms, with different extensions? So we call one of them. Draw the killer away. I'm always time. That could work. Exactly! It's worth a shot. I can hear you, you know. The son of a bitch hasn't killed me yet. Yeah, sorry, Maurice. Peggy and I were just trying to figure out... <sighs> you realize how stupid that plan sounds, right? For that to be successful, you're gonna need every phone extension. Plus, a plan of the entire office floor. All delivered while the killer is en route. I've got it. And thank God I've always been cool under pressure. Don't go anywhere. You... you don't think the killer got him, do you? Mr. Russell... I'm here. The freak's going to be here any second, too. Go check your fax machine. Don't let me down. Tell me where the fax machine is again, Peggy. The fax machine's in the office on the other side of the hall. Thanks, Peggy. Be right back. Okay, go to the office on the other end of the hall, grab the fax from the machine, easy. 
Yeah, I don't think it's going to be that easy. Um, oh. This must be it. Oh, here we go. Let's just check if anything else is there before we uh, go in. Um, another thing that I'm really liking about this is the soundboard. Uh, I am a child when it comes to certain things, and yes, I will probably be playing the soundboards when and if I can. But let's just have a look at this quickly. Um, oh no. So we need to get him to the stairs, right? I don't think Maurice is going to survive this one. Hey, did you get the fax? Yes, I have. Mr. Russell, you, uh, you still with us? I am. You get my fax? Yeah, I got it right here. Good. I knew you could at least manage that. Okay, folks, we're back on the line with Maurice. Let's see if we can help him avoid the whistling man. Here's the situation. The whistling man searched every room in the hall leading up to the boardroom. And now he's in the office next door. It's now or never. His plan of yours better work. I'm ready on my end, Forrest. Again. We want to draw the killer away by dialing an extension number, and then move Maurice somewhere safe. So, what extension should I call? Oh, where did Maurice say he was? I forgot. Is he in the boardroom with the fax machine? Right, so we need to lure him away. Um, I think if we lure him to the... Uh, um, The archives room. If he's already, if the killer's already checked all the rooms, then if we lure him to the archives, that will give Maurice the time to either go in the cubicles, office space, or the kitchen, and then we can. Yeah, okay. I think archives. Yeah. Call the archives. The extension is 01. Got it. I'll put the call through when you're ready. All right, Nash. Where do I need to go? Hang on. What? Yeah, go to the kitchen. You're moving to the kitchen. The kitchen? That's just across from the archives. It's going to be tight. Are you sure, Nash? No, I'm not sure. Uh, let me rethink this. Damn it, man! Do you want me to be a headline murder? Hurry up! Oh, no, I can do it, yeah. On uh, second thought, let's dial another room. Let's dial another... Boy, we're wasting time! He's right, Forrest. I can get another number ready. But we probably won't get to change our minds again. Okay. Where do you want me to call? It's got to be the editor's office then, really, surely? Call the editor's office. The extension is 03. Got it. I'll put the call through when you're ready. All right, Nash. Where do I need to go? I mean, the archives has got a toilet, so he can hide in the toilet, right? And they've got a secure archive. Yeah, let's. You're moving to the archives. Yeah, that makes sense. Go somewhere he's already checked. Not bad, Nash. I'm ready to place the call. Are you ready, Mr. Russell? Don't have much choice, do I? Make the call. Yes, sir. Calling now. I can't believe it. He's actually heading to my office. It was all Peggy's idea. Credit goes to her. Ah, uh, don't mention it. The coast is clear. I'm shutting off the TV so he won't see me on the security cameras. Then, making my move, I'll call when I get there. Oh, that was tough. Do you think tough. he'll make it okay? I'm sure he'll be fine. But now, what do we do? We gotta find some way for him to get past that barricade. What do you mean? I don't think calling the whistling man is gonna buy Maurice enough time to move those cabinets. 
We gotta think of something else. Yeah. Maybe we could... Oh! Call incoming. You ready? Ready as I'll ever be. I put him through. Alrighty. Mr. Russell, are you there? I am. I don't think he saw me. I've gotta give you credit for that. But I'm not out of the woods yet. Uh... Right, let's review where we are. So, the only way out is by the stairs, which the whistling man has blocked with furniture. Exactly. I can move the furniture out of the way. But not quickly, or quietly. Could you lock him in a room? That'd probably buy you time enough, right? Maybe. But the damn fire regulations say every door in the office has to unlock from the inside. He'd be able to get out just as soon as... Wait. Wait, wait. No. No, no, no. I got it. The secret archive through my office. Where we keep our most sensitive records. Ooh, a secret archive? Reggie would love that. What have you got back there? Juicy secrets about outer space? Ah. Yeah. I didn't know you were into conspiracies, Peggy. I may have borrowed a few tapes from our manager's office. He has quite the collection. Will you two chatterboxes pipe down? I've got it all figured out. The secret archive. There's no lock on the inside of that room. Only the outside. You can't break out. If we can get him in there, and I lock him in... We can catch the son of a gun. Exactly. Oh my god, Forrest, we might be able to end the nightmare right here. So should I call the secret archive then? You can't. The archive is a room for secrets, not gossip. So we don't have a phone in there. Oh, we're gonna need to change it up then. Any ideas, Forrest? Is there a TV in that room? Maybe that could draw him in. Ah, of course. I turn it up, he comes in, and I get my head chopped off. Think of something else. Maybe we could use a radio. There's no radio in the secret archives. Are there no radios at your offices? I don't have one in my office, but... What is it? Our sports reporter, Hopkins. He has a little portable radio he never turns off when he's here. That might be what we need then. Is his portable radio still there? It should be. It's what he calls his work radio. It should be here in the archives, actually. Let me just take a peek around. Great job, Forrest. Looks like you picked the perfect place. <laughs> yep. That was, uh, 100% just me thinking ahead. Exactly as planned. I found the radio! It's right where I thought it would be. It's all coming together. I'm just gonna turn it on quickly, make sure it's still got some juice. Maurice, turn the volume down. We don't want that thing blasting just yet. Yeah, yeah, I knew that, Dash. I was just doing that when you yelled at me. The radio works! If I make it out alive, Hopkins might just get that day off he wanted. Eh, he's earned it. Let's do it for Hopkins, Forrest. Wait. Ah, oh, god damn it. If I can't have this stupid thing turned up, how am I supposed to draw the killer? I can't be in the room when it's on, or I'm dead! You just... Oh, that's a good point. But wait! We're the radio. We can just be quiet until you're ready. Eh, if you can do that, then... Yeah, sure. 189.16, I know that's your station number. But a good editor always double checks. Can you confirm that? 189.16. One eighty nine point sixteen. The Scream. Gallows Creek's best and only phone-in talk show. With me, Forrest Nash. And me, Peggy. Jesus Christ. I've got the radio on silent, but I'm tuned in. Now, I just need to get to my office. 
Sounds like we need to make another call, Forrest. Where should we send the killer? Call the boardroom. The extension is 04. That might work. The boardroom is fairly close to the editor's office, but we haven't seen the killer go there yet. Are you sure? I'm sure. Make the call. Okay, calling the boardroom now. He's on the move. I'll call you guys from my office in a second. Looks like we're almost through this nightmare. Any idea what you'll say to draw the killer in? I'm gonna do my best impersonation of Maurice. I think that'll draw the killer in. What's your Mr. Russell impression? I think I gave that mask freak to slip. What a great plan this is, Pearl. Uh, I'll give you an A for effort. Ooh, call coming in. Here we go. I'm here. The radio's set up in the secret archive. Just give me the signal, and I'll turn it all the way up. Where will you hide in the meantime? I am the... Good question. It's under my desk, but uh, you can see under it. I've got a big cabinet, but uh, that'll take me a second to get into. Anywhere else? Uh, not really. There's the secret archive itself, but uh, that's where the kill is going. I could try the cubicles, but they're pretty far away. Your judgment has kept me alive so far, Nash. Oh, tough. This is tough now. If he hides under the desk, he's going to be clearly seen. If he hides in the cabinet, he won't have time to get out. If he hides in the secret archive, I think that's probably going to be the best bet. Because the cubicles are too far away, right? If he's in... Oh, <laughs> oh no. We've got to go with our gut. If he can... Uh... See, the thing is, he hasn't told us what the secret archive looks like. If there's like a little door that he can just like swing through, that's the, probably the best bet. Oh, he's going to make a noise, isn't he, in the cabinet? He's going to be seen in the desk. The cubicles is the next best thing. But is that too far away? God damn. Maurice, I'm sorry. Let's go to cubicles. Hide among the cubicles. All right. Well, this is it. I'm going to go turn the radio up to full blast now. Don't say anything until I've had time to hide. You got it? We know the plan. You can trust us. Here we go. Quick, Mr. Russell. Hide in the back room in your office. Forrest, I don't think that was enough time for him to hide. Wait, really? Oh, shit. Uh, Forrest Dash! Oh, you no. son of a bitch! Oh, no. I told you to... Forrest, he's... He's... Dead. <sighs> Let's put on a song. Give us some time to recover. I think that would be for the best, Peggy. <sighs> Folks, we'll be back soon. If you have any stories about Maurice that you'd like to share, give us a call after this next track. I, th I okay. I thought well, I had it there. This is gonna be a long night. Oh, really? I feel like it's going pretty quickly to me. I could ask you some questions to speed things along. You're gonna interview me. You sure about that? You're not so scary. Besides, we've been working together like a week now, and you're still all shrouded in mystery. All right, shoot. What do you want to know? Question one. Tell me about your family. What? <laughs> Come on, Peggy, that, that's too general. Okay. Did anyone move with you to Gallows Creek? Nope. Now that's too specific. Too specific? I... 
Do you have any siblings? I don't. I'm an only child, and my folks are dead. Oh, I'm sorry, Forrest. You're sorry? Why? Did you do it? Of course not. I only... I'm just messing with you. Anyway, what about you? Any siblings? Your mom and pop still around? I thought I was asking the questions. You were. I'm just making conversation now. Oh. Well, my folks went the same way as yours. Oh. What happened there? My dad walked out when I was about 13. He'd been a wreck for a while. Then he got himself into a wreck, and, well, that was dad. Mom didn't take it well. She remarried pretty quick after that. She wanted to forget dad so bad, she even made me take my stepdad's last name. So I'm Peggy Weaver now. Anyway, Mr. Weaver got sick one day, and my mom didn't last long after he went. I'm sorry to hear that, Peg. Don't call me Peg. Yeah, sorry. I was just trying to be... It's okay, I know. I'm sorry. I'm defensive about that name. Any siblings? Funny you mention that now. No. Not anymore. I had a sister, but I haven't seen her since before my dad. Hold on. Someone just rang the door buzzer. Really? Think someone needs our help? Maybe. You want to go check it out? Me? You sure you don't want to go? No way. I'm locked up tight in here. I'll pass you the key to the stairs. <sighs> Gee, thanks, Peggy. The buzzer's on the front door. See you in a bit. Okay. Down to the first floor, then check the door. I'm sorry about Maurice. I thought we had it down. That's the office, sorry. Uh, oh, here we go. New areas to explore. Yeah, I kind of stumbled on that last one. It was the last one, wasn't it? I probably should have had him not go to the cubicles. I probably should have had him go into the archives, but what can you do? Anyway, before we get to that tape, let's explore a little bit. Top hits. Ah, uh, the best hit songs from Rick Aston, Belladonna, <laughs> UTB4, <laughs> Michael Simpson, Ahaha, ah, Dry Dry Dry, Not Wet Wet Wet. Wow, I'm loving it. Depeche Alamood, Banana Rama Mana Man, Jureen, 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 Wamu. Wow, I'm loving it. From Below It Came. Hmm. Okay. Uh, let's just see what's over here. Got some coffee. Can we... Okay, thought there would be something in the... Oh, okay. There we go. We've got the reception area here. Rolodexes. Um, is that anything? No, it's all... Once again, ah, what's this? Bob, I don't know how to say this, but I think we should see other people. I hope you can still be friends, though. Brad, P.S. You owe me five bucks for the festival tickets. Wow, Brad. That's a... shitty thing to do. We've got some pictures of cats. Nice. New music to play. Oh. Okay. Oh, that's just... Okay, that just went into... What is this? Oh. Uh, that looks like it's going to be something for later. Hang on. Can I... I'm going to put that over here. I need a key to get in there. Alright. So, we picked up a new record that we can use. Haven't used many records yet. A... And tape. A tape? Oh, they're talking about that on the floor. Okay. Now, I'm more interested in what's going on over here. Oh, wow. We've got different things here. Okay, we're going to leave this for now. Let's just pick up the tape. We've got some kind of... Play on air. Play me on air. Okay. I think we've got probably another piece to a puzzle for something later on. But we'll take this right now. Why not? Uh, we can't... Oh, that's locked. The fire... Like, the, the rooftop access is locked? Okay. Alright. 
That's the officers. We don't need that. Toilets, fine. We check them out. Yeah. Okay. Let's see. I'm going to put you there for now. And you, my friend. Hmm. What are we going to do with you? Let's put you... Let's put you over here. Because I feel like you're going to be in use later on, perhaps. And let's talk to Peggy. Who was there? I didn't see who it was. Are they still out there? No. They left as soon as I went down there. They pushed a cassette through the door. It says, play me on air. All right. Well, turn the music off and play it. Hello, Gallows Creek. Time to pay the price. Time to pay for lies. Time to sit there. I will punish you. I'm going to enjoy this. I did not enjoy that. What the hell was that? I. Oh, Forrest, we're still on air. Say something. Folks, the... Oh. <clears throat> Folks, the tape you just heard was passed through our door only moments ago. I don't know how the killer could get from the newspaper to KFAM so quick, but... Be careful, Gallows Creek. Stay home and stay safe. Give us a call if you need help. You can get us on 911. Thank you again, Mrs. McKenzie, for the helpful tip. The bagger at the grocery store cannot whistle. We'll remove her from the suspect list. Let's go to a break. I need you for a second. All right, folks. We need to take a quick break. This one's for all those folks out there keeping the hatches battened. You'll like this next song. All right, Peggy, what's up? I pushed a cassette under my door. Go play it. Uh, sure. Just go get it. My god, are there any professionals at KFAM? This is Gina Franklin. I'm calling because your backwater station has not honored our agreement. We gave you Mr. Snatcher's newest single, the kind of honor you never had and probably never will again. And we've still not received any information about when you're fitting it into your busy programming. I'll be frank. I didn't want you as part of this debut, but Mr. Snatcher, due to his prior friendship with Mr. Nash... Oh, prior and current friendship, Gina. Forrest Nate, you alright? Don't worry about Gina, you know how she is. But yeah, can't wait for you to hear the new single, man. I think Final Breath is my best work yet. I really hope you and your listeners like it. And man, if you ever find your way this side of the pond, let me know. We'll have to catch up. Oh, yeah, if Final Breath isn't played on your airwaves by the end of Mr. Nash's show tonight, the next call will be much less friendly. That was Roddy Snatcher, Forrest! You know, Roddy Snatcher? Yeah, Roddy and I are old friends. Oh, I love Roddy! I Will Always Find You was my song. I wish we still had it in rotation. Oh my god, I can't believe you know Roddy Snatcher. 
And I can't believe you didn't tell me he sent you his new single. We have to play Final Breath. Where is it? I found it earlier, hidden away at reception. Ugh, why didn't Barbara say anything? I mean, well, if that fiasco last Friday about the missing knife and easy track is any indication, folks at KFAM aren't against hoarding station music for personal use. I think we're still missing a few tracks, actually. Well, we have it now. Let's put it on. Gallows Creek, I'm pleased to say we're in for a much needed treat. Up next, courtesy of the British sensation himself, is a track you won't hear everywhere. Here's Final Breath by Roddy Snatcher. Wow. God, Roddy's the best. He is. And more importantly, we should be safe from the worst of Gina Franklin. Peggy, you just talked through the whole song. Oh, whoops. It's okay. I can just play it on loop later. Oh, shoot. I just noticed we have a caller waiting. I really hope it's nothing serious. We have a call waiting. Evening, caller. This is Forrest Nash. Host of 189.16, The Scream. And tonight's 911 stand in. This is Murphy! <laughs> Hello, Murphy. Uh, what have you got for us tonight? Two things, Forrest. First, happy birthday to my son, Fernando. He's free today. And man, being his daddy has changed my life. I've learned how to live, how to laugh. Most importantly, how to love. Aw, happy birthday, Fernando. Happy birthday, Fernando. Thanks. And now, my other thing. I'm putting the word out to this so-called killer. You think you're tough, huh? Big man with a big knife, huh? Ruben, come face me, a true warrior at the Gallows Waste Disposal Plant. This is a bad idea, Murphy. I got all the tapes in Master Robbie's Dojo series. So get ready, whistling man. You just let loose the junkyard dog. Oh no. <sighs> and there he goes. Ladies and gentlemen, keep your fingers crossed for Murphy as he tries to become our hometown hero. <sighs> anyway, we'll be right back after this commercial. Do you seek ancient wisdom? Do you want to double your power? Are you ready to unlock your inner warrior for only $24.99? Then, step into Master Robbie's deadly dojo of Kung Rate and receive direct by video warrior instruction from me, Master Robbie. You will learn the four qualities of an ultimate conqueror. The power of the alligator, the discipline of the tarantula, the speed of the tuna, the poise of the scorpion, and the wisdom of the bullfrog. Using classified techniques, I'll unlock your inner chi after only five 30-minute video sessions. Ultimate power and wisdom can be yours now for the low, low price of only $24.99. Just call 555-7861-USA to take your first step to becoming a champion. Never forget the element of surprise! If you buy today, you'll receive two additional VHS tapes, the Tornado Technique and Karate Love Me. Call today! 
Dude, people really buy this kind of thing? Don't pretend like you're not interested. I mean, I wouldn't buy them, but I might watch them, I guess. Yeah, I bet karate lovemaking sure is something. Uh, I, uh... <laughs> is Forrest Nash at a loss for words? Hey, let's just get to the show. Wow, what a deal. Only $24.99. And I'm not just saying that because they're paying for the airtime. Just ask Murphy. But unless they pay us more, then it's time to get the show moving along with our next caller. We got a caller. You know what to do. Hello, caller. You're live on the stream with me, Forrest Nash. <sighs> Who's there? Who is this? Are you okay? Do you need help? Forrest? He called me? That horrible whistling down the phone. He's coming for me? Jesus. Okay, listen, Collar, don't panic. We've done this a few times now. We can help you. A few times already? So, you saved them, or? Sure. We're gonna help you. Can you tell me your name, caller? I'm Dr. Sullivan of Virginia. Sorry. Take some deep breaths, Virginia. You're gonna be okay. Please don't let me die. I won't. Just calm down. Tell me where you are right now. What's your address? I'm... I'm... Oh, God. Is there a neighbor you can call for help? You live by a frat house. Yes, they're having a party. That takeout coming in all night. Lawn covered in beer cans. They're getting wasted. And I'm about to get... Oh, God. Virginia, what's the name of the frat? It's... Oh, God. I can't think. I, I can't... Any idea what the frat might be, Peggy? If I knew where she was, I might know. But... Wait, the takeout. If we can get takeout to the frat, we can get a message to them to go and help. Virginia, who did they order takeout from? I don't know. Come on, Virginia. Try to remember. I can't do this. Well, folks, seems like our Virginia hung up. While we try to figure out what takeout to order, here's some music for your own midnight snacks. It's funky, it's groovy, it's stabbing the Twilight by Knife and Easy. Peggy, what places do take out in Gallows Creek? Off the top of my head? Uh, well... There's the barbecue place, Grilling Spree, and you can order from Chalupa Cabras. Oh, and of course we have Ponte's Pizza. That's it, I think. All right, we'll call each place and ask who they deliver to tonight. That's not going to work. Take out client privilege. What? There was a lot of competition back in the day. Things got ugly. It's a long story. But what we can do is this. We figure out where the frat boys order from, call the takeout pretending to be from the frat, place an order, and include a note asking them to call the station. <sighs> There's no other way, is there? Not that I can see. Well, let's not waste any time then. That's the spirit. You got any suggestions on where to look? Check the offices for anything food related. And maybe the kitchen downstairs. You'll need a key for that. I'll just slide it under my door now. Thanks, Peggy. God, where to start? What would make me order from somewhere if I were a partying frat boy? We have a food critic, right? Chad or Brad or... I just have to look around. Mm -hmm. 
So here we are again. <clears throat> New area unlocked. So, what do we have? The, uh, the coffee room? Before we go in there, though... Oh, we have a little... Nothing around here. Let's just check out the area. Got some stairs. Locked. Need to key. Private office and some other. Oh. Hmm. Don't know what's going on That's in there. Happening. Okay. I'm bummed out about Maurice. Sorry, Maurice. Couldn't help you there. Oh, no, wrong one. Sorry. This is the uh, cafe area. Nothing in there. We're looking for takeaway boxes. Coffee's on. Can we? Oh, okay. I thought we'd be able to do something there. Aha. Rooting through trash. This is a new low. Ooh. Interesting offer. I wonder how well Gallows High performed. Ponty's Pizza, huh? Let's just uh, keep that. Truck! Full killer loads and bolts action! Ooh, yeah! We don't need trucks. What is that? Oh, it's a... Paper to... Oh, arcades! Oh, out of order. Come back with me tomorrow. That's bullshit, that is. Oh, we've got a tape here. Can we... Is that something? Are we going to need to use tapes? No. Maybe not. Hmm. Okay, well, I think this is the, uh, the thing we need, right? Ponty's Pizza, the Scottish guy that called up earlier, who was self-promoting himself. Yeah, let's take this back. Locked. For now. For now. Hmm. I feel like there's going to be new things down here for some reason. Um, I'm really enjoying this. I'm really liking this. I think we're going to play for another kind of 20 minutes or so. We'll have a two hour session. I'm not entirely sure how long this game is going to last. Maybe four or five hours? Um, but uh, yeah, this is definitely going to be something that's going to be done in parts. The music's still playing. The killer's still out there. Let's see how we get on with this. Anything useful? Well, I, th I didn't see anything else. Oh, maybe I need to look in the other office. Uh, yes, I have. Let's go. That's great. Are you ready to get back on the line? Let's make the call. When you're ready, shut the music off. Okay, Forrest, what'll it be? Call Ponty's Pizza. You got it. Ponty's Pizza is on the line. Ponty's Pizza, may I take your order? Fratman calling. We're in major need of foods for dudes. Uh, may I take your order? Oh, man, I got a frat to feed, so give me that slow roast pizza. Oh, a fine choice, but that will take three hours. You sure? Never mind, just give me the garlic bread. Can do. Where do you want that delivered? Uh, same place as before, you know, the frat house. Got it, and we'll have that over to you right away. Oh, and, and one more thing. Can you add a note to the order that says to call KFAM? KFAM? Oh, consider it done. The folks at KFAM are huge fans of Ponty's Pizza, you know. I should really call them and let them know. And now we wait. 
We should put a song on. Agreed. This one goes out to our delivery workers. Hope you enjoy this one as much as I do. Which of the takeout places would you order from? To save Virginia? No, wh where would you actually eat? Oh, I mean, they're all pretty equal. You mean equally good? Yeah, not Ponty. He's not Ponty. Right, so between grilling spree and chalupa cobras. I mean, it depends. Do I want a plate full of meat? Or do I want really, really good nachos? It can change depending on the day, you know? Yeah, fair enough. Uh, maybe I... Hold that thought, Forrest. We've got a call coming in. Hello, caller. You're live on the stream with me, Forrest Nash. Okay, okay. <laughs> hey, 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 this is Fretman Bunker. We got some garlic bread and a note to call this number. <laughs> yes. Bunker, this is Forrest Nash from 189.16, The Scream. And is this Goose? <laughs> oh, man. It's totally you, isn't it, Goose? <laughs> this is such a goose prank. Sure, whatever, it, it's Goose. Now listen, I- Goose, dude, get your ass to the party. We got so much beer! Uh, listen, I need you to- Goose, come get beer. Your brothers are waiting for you. I'm not Goose. I. Uh, how can I prove this to you? Oh, let me get a second opinion on this. Norman the Barbarian! What do you think? <laughs> Great idea. Norman the Barbarian says only the radio man can control the tunes. So, play us the flow. Wait, really? What? The flow? Norman the Barbarian demands it. Okay, okay. I'll play the damn song. Oh, shit. Okay, okay, Radio Man. You got my attention. What is it? Thank God. Listen, you've got to get over to your neighbor's house. All of you, just... Say no more. Bunker's moving the house. Forrest, line two. Hello, you're live on 189.16, The Scream. Forrest, it's the killer. He's at the door. Grace, oh my god, it's, it's you, isn't it? God, I didn't talk, I promise. Welcome, Virginia. And thank you to Plunker and his fraternity brothers. Some heroes wear capes, some wear sheets as togas. Hey, Forrest, did you hear what Virginia said earlier? What was that all about? Clive, I didn't talk. Do you know what she meant? There's a janitor here at the station named Clive, but your guess is as good as mine. All right, folks. Seems we may have a lead. If any of you know a suspicious Clive, then please call in. It could save lives. In the meantime, looks like we have another caller. Hello, caller. You're live on the stream with me, Forrest Nash. It's great to speak with you, Forrest. As a local small business owner, oh, I find this all horrifying. 
A killer roaming the streets of our fair town? Ooh, terrible. <sighs> I hear you there. It's a scary time for everyone in Gallows Creek. How are you holding up? You somewhere safe tonight? Yes, Forrest, I am. I'm here at work in my small business. It's a safe, family-friendly place. Oh, what small business do you own? Oh, well, I'm not really big on promotion, but uh, since you ask, it's Porty's Pizza! The best and only pizza place in town! Come on down and get yourself a cracking deal on our two-for-one pizza! God damn it, Ponty, no! No free ads! <sighs> I mean, I guess we can't be that mad at him. Calling Ponty's did save Virginia. I can be mad, Peggy. That sort of thing just... Uh, I can be mad. Look, he's gone now. We already have somebody else on the line. Just take a deep breath and let's keep going. Evening, caller. This is Forrest Nash, host of 189.16, The Scream. And tonight's 911 stand-in. Hi! Hello? 16. Am I on air? Sure, our caller. What's your name? And what have you got for us tonight? Name's Eugene Stein, and I've got a heart full of love, Forrest. I'm hanging out in the middle of the maze maze, listening to your show, looking up at the stars and waiting for her. You got a special lady coming out to see you. Yeah. Molly. We planned to get lost in the maze maze tonight, to take our first journey together into the love labyrinth. That's why I'm calling, actually. I, I thought she'd be here an hour ago. And since I've listened all night to how cool you play it, I thought you were the perfect guy to ask. Should I call her up and ask if she's coming, or wait and see? For real, kid? If you've been listening all night, do you really need to ask me? Yes, that's why I'm calling. Eugene? You really need to go home to your parents. My parents are dead, actually. But, uh... Oh, jeez. Yeah, I guess it's not the night. Hang on! I hear some rustling. I guess she came after all. Molly! I'm in the middle! It'll take a little while to get here, but, uh... Thanks again, Forrest. It's been good talking. Bingo. Here's what I was looking for. Wait a second. Molly can't whistle. No, no, this is supposed to be the best night of my life. Not the worst. Eugene, do you know the way out? It wouldn't be the maze maze if he could just remember the way, Forrest. She's right! I... Listen, Eugene, breathe, hide, and call back in a minute. We'll get you out. I... I'll do it for Molly. But please, hurry. Well, listeners, while Peggy and I deliberate, here's a track for all you lovers out there. Enjoy this classic by Smooth. It's their hit song, The Word. How the hell am I supposed to get him through the maze maze? You know Barbara, our receptionist? She's a maze maze fanatic. Shame she isn't here. I was supposed to go with her last week, but she changed her mind. Why'd she change her mind? She went with that jerk Brad instead. Does everyone in Gallows Creek go on dates in the maze maze? A lot of folks do. There's something nice about getting lost, I guess. And besides, there's not much else to do here. Maybe we should call Barbara then? If she's so big on the maze maze. We could, but I don't actually know her number. But she probably has maze maze stuff somewhere. Go and see what you can find. That'll hopefully be enough. Uh, which one is Barbara again? Barbara, you know, Barbara. Uh... Forrest, I've seen you speak to her. God, help me out, Peggy. She's the receptionist. Sits at reception, 
never does any work because she's talking to Brad all day? Ring any bells? Right, yeah, sorry, I guess it's just the stress of- No excuses, just go and find something to help us. Well, I think I already have, because I went downstairs before, and it didn't look good. Um, Brad seemed to have, like, broken up with her, so... Um, this, I suspect, is the maze maze, like, when Eugene was sort of talking there, and was like, I'm in the middle! I was like, oh, we have, we have a maze that we picked up earlier. Let's use this. Um, so I'm not actually sure what I'm meant to do now, because I brought this in earlier. Um, oh, here we go, we can talk to Peggy, okay. But this looks complicated. Hang on, hang on. Let me just have a look here. If he's in the middle... Right. So I'm guessing that he's gonna be going- and we're gonna have to direct him, okay? Ah, uh, God. I need to work my way from the back. <laughs> uh, middle... Right, the first thing he's gonna come to is the tractor and the golden hay bells. If we go... No, right is not going to work. Right just leads it. So left, four and three, pig statue, and realistic. And then left from there. Uh, hopefully. Oh, God. Well, hopefully it won't be like Maurice. Let's try this out. Let's see if we can find uh, saving Eugene. Any luck? Yeah, I found a map for the maze maze in the trash. Why was it in the trash? Never mind. It doesn't matter right now. That's a question for Barbara later. Eugene called while you were away. He's on line one. Okay, Forrest, shut the music off. Welcome back to 189.16, The Scream. I hope you lovers like that track. And I hope we can help our lover in the maze maze. Eugene, you're back on air. <laughs> I'm lost, Forrest! I just ran and I... I don't know where I am. Oh, gosh. I'm at a crossroad facing a tractor statue. Right. There are hay bales painted gold on my right. Go left. Okay. Okay. I went left, then tried a right. I have a pig statue in front of me, and a creepy rocking horse on my left. Sorry, a pig statue in front of him. That means, uh, go backwards then. Go backwards. Yeah. Oh, God! Why didn't I just fight her over? Oh. I'm at a crossroads. There's a pitchfork statue up ahead. Which way? Up ahead, left, then right. Oh, did he say he's at a crossroads? Picture up ahead. Yeah, left. Go left. Oh, this must count tonight. Was meant to go. I just want some love. Shut up, Eugene. Front, so he has to go right. Go right. Should be at the run. corn silo, right? Much more. At the corn silo. I just passed a corn silo. Didn't see anything else. Where do I go? Well, go right. Huzzah! That was 
tense. I think I held my breath the whole time. I think it went pretty well, all told. <laughs> I think you're right. By the way, why do you think Molly missed their date? Do you think she's okay? Unfortunately for Eugene, I think she probably never left home. Oh, Eugene, buddy. Pal. And thank you for calling in, Mr. Walton. We'll make sure to add the town librarian to our list of suspicious Clives. Remember, report a Clive to stay alive. Next caller is up, Forrest, so take it away. Caller, you're through to Forrest Nash on 189.16, The Screen. 189.16. Wonderful show tonight, Forrest. Thank you. That's really wonderful of you to say. What's your name, Caller? Uh, you can call me Don. Could you play my tune, Forrest? Your tune? Sure. Long Ride Home. That old song? Sure. We got it. I think I played it the other day. Thanks. It'll be good to hear it again. All right, folks. Coming up is that old classic. Uh, Forrest, I don't think you're gonna find that song. What do you mean? I played it a few nights ago. I know, but, uh, we don't have it anymore. What are you talking about? I threw it away. You threw it in the trash? No, I... I threw it out the window earlier today. Uh, and why did you throw it out the window earlier today? Brad was annoying me all afternoon. He played it on repeat because he knows I don't like it. So I grabbed it and threw it right out of one of the office windows. Not my finest hour, but I can only take so much. All right. So, uh, what do we do instead then? Let's just play a different song. We've got more important things to think about anyway. Gotcha. Okay, folks, here comes some unrequested music. Sorry about that, Dawn. Maybe try again tomorrow night. Sorry. Of all the songs to request, why'd it have to be that one? Gee, Peggy, what did the barn finds ever do to you? Wrote that song, for one. It gets real old when you're forced to listen to it on repeat for years. <sighs> why couldn't they just request Roddy? Oh, Forrest, scrap the song. We have another caller. Sorry to cut the music short, folks. Callers take priority tonight. Welcome to 189.16, The Scream. This is Forrest Nat. Forrest? Oh, thank God. It's me again. Murphy? Talk to me, Murphy. What's wrong? Oh, the killer got me, man. I... Uh, why did I ever trust a guy named Master Robin? <sighs> I warned you not to... Hindsight is 2020, okay? Forrest, we need to do something. Goddamn piece of... You came to the gallows waste disposal plant. Beat on me, man. Carry me inside and lock me in a dumpster. I got a flashlight, but... Oh. Oh, goddamn. I smell smoke. I think he started a fire. Hold on, Murphy. We'll call for help right now. You gotta hurry, man. I need someone here now or I'm gonna die. Peggy, get the fire department on the line. On it. All right. Now just... Come on, pick up. Hi. Yes, I'd like to report a fire over at the Gallows Waste Disposal Plant. It's an emergency. What do you mean it's not operational? Why is there no backup vehicle? He... Oh, God damn it! Forrest, that evil son of a bitch slashed the tires on the town's only fire engine. They can't do anything. I have a few friends who live nearby. Maybe one of them can save Murphy. Where do they live? My friend Alex lives on the corner of Haddonfield and Romero Street. 
and Catherine lives on the west end of Myers Lane. And there's Jericho on the east end of Myers Lane. But he's old. Really old. Okay, I'll check the map, see who would be best to do this. Okay, guys, let's have a look here. So, um, Alex lives on the corner of Haddonfield Road, right next to Ramiro Street. So, let's take that. Um, Alex lives on the corner of Haddonfield Road. There's the waste disposal, Haddonfield Road, uh, right next to Ramiro Street. So, that's down here. Okay. Catherine lives at the west end of Myers Lane. Myers Lane. That's the west end of Myers Lane there. Um, old Man Jericho lives at the east end of Myers Lane, which would be here, I guess. And then, oh, the fire department, get more fire engines. Uh, where is the fire department? Don't think we need it, but um, we'll just leave you there. Um... But then Eastside McCready Street will be closed from the 2nd to 9th of September for maintenance. Residents will be unable to access the connecting road between Rogers Avenue and Haddonfield Road. Haddonfield Road is there. Rogers Avenue. Right, so that takes out Alex, right? Then you've got the old man and Catherine. She's the furthest away, but he's the old man. He... Ah, ha, 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 ha. Mm. Does this mean then I would go for Alex, but this saying that the access connecting road between Rogers Avenue... And, what what one was that? Oh, I don't know. Does that mean we can get him in? I think this is going to be like locked off because that would be the obvious one, right? I don't know. That would be the obvious one, but the street's closed. So, McCready Street. Eastside McCready Street will be closed. Yeah, he's he's locked off. He's locked off. This Alex guy won't be able to go up Haddonfield Road, won't be able to use McCready Street, so he's completely shut down. That's what I'm getting here. An old man is too old, so something's going to happen. All right. ah, she's furthest away, though. I don't like it. I don't like it. And I think that's where we're going to stop for this evening, guys. Um, so far, I am really enjoying Killer Frequency. Um, being a, the, the satisfaction of just hearing that LP noise. Oh. I could do that all day and that would be fun. Um, using the callers, finding out the... Using the soundboard, putting the sounds on. I'm really enjoying this. Um, unfortunately, Maurice did not survive. Um, I made a last minute boo-boo when a time critical moment came. And uh, yeah, I should have given him more time. Perhaps if I'd have given him more time, he would have been able to shut the killer in the room. However, I don't think that would have happened anyway. Maybe he was always designed to die. That's what I'm going to say. Anyway, guys, join us on the next episode shortly for part two of Killer Frequency. Maybe we'll find out more about the killer, the whistling man. Maybe we'll find out more about Peggy. I'm always a bit dubious when people are in the, you can't really see what they look like. Like we just see a kind of silhouette, a dark silhouette. Is Peggy involved? I think Peggy's gonna be involved somehow. I think this is all gonna come back to maybe some of my past exploits in Chicago. But I'm, the puzzles have been really, they haven't been head scratchingly bad, but they've also been also like, oh no, what do I do? I'm glad most of them haven't been time based because I would be killing everyone in Gallows Creek. Anyway, guys, join us on the next one. I'll see you then. Bye bye.